In this video I'm going to show you how to get your PlayStation 3 DualShock controller working with uh, Windows 7 64-bit. So uh, you just need three files, your 64-bit driver file, your uh, vibration driver file if you want that, and your uh, unsigned uh, driver override program. Uh, the first thing you want to do is just go to control panel and we're going to check on your user account uh, controls. You want to make sure they're set as low as possible. Um, if they're not, you can have lots of driver install programs where some uh, drivers might not install properly, so just make sure it's on never notify. Um, you may have to restart. Um, after that, uh, you're going to install your 64-bit driver, which ends in AMD64. Um, and just go ahead and just hit next through all that so it installs. Um, after it's done, we're going to go ahead and uh, check on the device and uh, device manager. So go to control panel, device manager, and then go ahead and check on your um, human interface devices. And you should see your game controller in there. Um, if not, go ahead and plug it in and you should see it. Um, what you want to do is get the hardware ID of this. Um, what this is, is basically, um, you can tell which of your uh, USB controllers this device is on. So right now mine is on revision 100. Um, so I just want to check my USB input devices um, for one that matches 100. So um, we'll check this one. And obviously this isn't the correct one because this isn't revision 100. So um, you may have multiple or you may just have one input device. but. Um, you just want to match them. So this is revision 100, so this is the correct one. What you're going to do is just right click, update driver, go to browse, um, go to let me pick, and then go to have disk. Um, what this will do is we're going to go ahead and find the uh, driver file we just uh, installed. Um, and I'll show you where that is real quick. Um, it will be in program files, and then it will be motion and enjoy and those will be a DS3 and then drivers folder. Um, we're going to use this one that ends in HID for the hardware ID and just hit OK. Um, it should show the Motion Enjoy USB gamepad after that and uh, you just want to hit next and it will install. So after that um, it should show up properly in here that USB input device is now the Motion Enjoy USB gamepad. Um, so after that we're going to go ahead and set it up so Windows won't need to um, locate the driver, or you won't have to tell Windows where to locate the driver. We'll be able to uh, uh, have it you know, automatically pull up. So you want to go ahead and go to your uh, Motion Enjoy folder again with the drivers. And uh, this one, uh, this is the one we want, the system file that ends in uh, FILT. And what you're going to do is take that file and put it in your Windows folder which is right here and there's a system32 folder put and then a driver drivers folder right there and you're just going to go ahead and copy that in and that, I already have it in here just copy and replace and what you're going to do is basically uh, run this uh, unsigned driver override program and what this does is allows you to basically run any uh, driver file without having to boot into a, into a special mode. Um, so what you're going to do is run this program and just basically hit next. There's just some warnings here. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to click on sign a system file and just click on that and it'll ask you for the location of the system file. So what you're going to do is just go to up here and it'll automatically put it into a path that's copyable. And uh, what you're going to do is just copy down that uh, file name so it's uh, M-I-J-U-F-I-L-T dot sys and um, just hit OK and it will pause for a minute and it will say it's been signed successfully and you'll have to uh, restart your computer. Um, make sure you go to enable test mode and just hit next one more time. Um, Alright, now that it's enabled you're going to go ahead and have to restart so go ahead and do so right now. Okay. After restarting, you're pretty much good to go. Um, if you want vibration, um, go ahead and install the last uh, driver file, which is obviously that vibration one, and just go ahead and hit next. Um, when you first install it, it will say program files uh, x86 like that. It'll try to install it into a 30-bit, 32-bit uh, 
uh, folder, just go ahead and delete that so it goes into the original 64-bit um, uh, folder and just go ahead and hit next and install that. Um, after that, uh, go ahead and go to control panel, uh, devices and printers, and then your PlayStation controller which is your settings. So. Um, right in here, your buttons should pretty much light up. If they don't, hit the middle PS button and they should start coming on. Um, the only thing that won't work at this point is your uh, analog, which should show up right here. Um, right now your D-pad pretty much controls that. Um, and obviously none of these uh, things work right here. So go ahead and just escape out of this. And um, go ahead and go to your DS3 tool. Um, this is a program that comes, uh, you know, with your Motion Enjoy package. So, um, if you want the full bells and whistles, which is, uh, you know, your analog sticks, your, you know, directional POV, and just motion sensing, just go ahead and check that. And if you're like most people, you'll probably want vibration. So just uh, enable that and then close out. Um, a lot of times that program will probably just crash on you when you exit. Um, or just uh, might not save the settings, uh, just reopen it. Um, a lot of times it will still save the settings even though when you reopen it everything is pretty much unchecked again. So um, even though um, I'm not going to check it again, go ahead and go back and everything should be showing up now. So your analog should be controllable, um, the point of view for your directional uh, pad is showing up and even your um, rotational um, with your uh, six axis will be showing up so um, that's pretty much that so it should be coming up now um, now as an example of this I'll go ahead and open up uh, an emulator for PlayStation and I'll just show you some quick settings to get your um, uh, rumble working so uh, it's called EPSXE and you want to go to game pads and port one um, it will show everything it's you know, pretty much allow you to you know, set all these options uh, manually. Um, you just want to make sure that it's set to DualShock um, right here. Um, and it will ask you for the rumble type. You want to make sure it's on Joy 1. Uh, for the big motor you want constant and for the small motor you want sign. Um, and that's pretty much it. So just make sure these are on full um, for all the... And uh, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, do a game as an example just to make sure it works. So I'll do Chrono Cross for right now. And when you first start a game, it'll tell you if analog is on or off on the top right. Um, and all I have to do is just hit F5 once the game starts to re enable it. So, yeah, just like that. Alright, and I'll go ahead and just load my game. And. Rumble does work, so it's definitely awesome. The game's just a little bit slow because uh, I'm recording at the same time. But uh, that's generally it. All you, all you need to do to uh, get it working. So, hope this helped uh, some of you. And.